Welcome to the basics of rheology with a focus on food rheology. This video is about the concept of viscosity and yield stress, part 2 of a 6 part series. Let's get started. What is viscosity? Viscosity is defined as the resistance to the flow of a material. A food material with higher viscosity and more resistance to the flow. How does water flow? How about honey? Now observe how the water and honey flow in this video. Which one of them needs more time to flow into the cup? Obviously, it's honey. Honey flows very slowly comparing to water. So honey has higher viscosity value comparing to water. This is a simple explanation of viscosity. However, viscosity in food rheology is more complex and have different types. Different types of viscosity could help to explain the characteristics of a fluid. There are different types of viscosity. Here, I introduce you to appearance extensional, intrinsic, and inherent viscosity. Appearance viscosity is shear stress divided by shear rate. It means a single viscosity value at a shear rate value. By looking at the, the graph, for Newtonian fleet, appearance viscosity is the same as Newtonian viscosity, and it is constant with the increasing shear rate. For non-Newtonian fleet, for instance here, shear thickening and shear thinning material, appearance viscosity increase for shear thickening materials while it is decreased in the case of shear thinning materials. You will get more explanation about non-Newtonian fluids in the video part 3. We can relate appearance viscosity to human mouth feel the perception to the thickness of a fluid. Then, the extensional viscosity. Extensional viscosity is the resistance to the extensional flow. Extensional flow happens due to the extension or stretching. In the extensional flow, we get a type of permanent deformation which is known as sagging. In daily life, we can see the example of extensional flow in dough making, the stretching of bubble gum, spooning corn syrup or honey. Let's see some example of extension of viscosity. As you see, when we spoon the honey, there are some extension of flow following the spoon that is going up. So we, we can see the extension of flow here of the honey. Another example is stretching the bubble gum. The gum is stretched. There is the extension deformation and you can clearly see when the gum is recombined together and stretch again. In real life, we usually deal with the apparent and extensional viscosity. How about intrinsic and inherent viscosity? Both of them are used to determine the molecular weights of the molecule present in the solution. In intrinsic viscosity, concentration of solute approach to zero and it means if we change the concentration of solute, then there is no change in intrinsic viscosity. Whereas, inherent viscosity tells us how much polymer contributing in the solution viscosity and it depends upon the concentration. So, they explain the rheological properties of polymers. They are used more for research and development purpose of new formulations or polymers as ingredients. Next is our main second topic, yield stress. Yield stress is defined as a stress required to begin the deformation of a material. Peanut butter is a very good example for yield stress. Now observe this video. Peanut butter does not flow even with bottom up the cup, but when we use the knife to take it out, it comes out because peanut butter has yield stress. Putting the knife to take the peanut butter out means we apply the yield stress, and it still sticks to the knife until we apply the stress again. 
Another example here is when we compare the mayonnaise and honey. We put them both on the plate and then we make the plate stand. Honey is flowing while the mayonnaise stays still. You can see in this video. So mayonnaise has your stress. So we need to apply some stress to make mayonnaise deform and a little bit flow, unlike the honey. So they have your stress. To wrap up, Viscosity is the resistance to the flow of our materials. Different fluids have different viscosity. Yield stress is the, the minimum stress to overcome before the fluids start to deform and flow. But not all the food have yield stress. I hope you enjoy our video and learn the concept of viscosity and yield stress. Thank you for watching and please look for our other videos. Thank you.